Sister Donna Palmer Tree yes. messaged me, or I'm sorry, left me a voicemail uh, while I was in prayer today, and um, she fell last night, oh, and so okay. she needs prayer. I don't know if they'll be, I know they won't be here, I expect them tonight, but uh, just keep them in prayer as well. Mm-hmm. And their daughter Dawn, uh, she had a mammogram and something came back, and so they have to do it again. Uh, just pray for good results there. And then she also has surgery on her other daughter. So remember that she feels well and not get care of the tests that need to be ran. Remember, Sister Amy, um, she had a little hospital this week as well. I can't remember something about her stomach, and she's got a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Brother Jordan? Brother Bradford. Okay, remember their vehicle brother, Michael Bradford, the van that. Uh, Whatever it may be that they can find it, let it be inexpensive. I know that they're on a fixed income, right for them. Yeah. Yes. Let's remember Becca. Remember Becca, she goes back to her kidney, got a good report. I know we had great reports thus far, so let's just remember 
Lord. Brother Bonnie, Master to say, feeling better and blessed. And was able to say that yesterday still weak, but he loves us, God. Oh, <laughs> we love you too, Brother Bonnie. Yeah. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Praise God. Let's remember, Sister Martha, to go to the doctor Friday. We want a blessed heart. So just pray that we go to the, she gets that cord on the side and they can help her figure out something that they can do for her to help relieve that. Anybody else? Uh, please pray for uh, both my jobs. Uh, we lost five people in one month at Culver's, and Myers is really starting to run low on certain products. If anybody's looking for a job, Myers and Culver's, any young kids that need a job, I think they start at 15. Oh, oh we grow public schools looking for uh, custodians, and I'm sure some other things as well, so just... Nobody wants to work. The last two years, I feel like everybody just, I don't understand it. So let's, let's go. These businesses that are struggling, that's going to make the economy struggle too. Because they can't stay open. So pray for that. Anybody else? No, I guess I'll stay in and go to the Lord in prayer. Let's remember Kingston's mommy and daddy. And that's when real Christian and Alyssa, they got their plate full for school and work and all of that. All right, let's just go forward in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, Lord. And God, we just lift up these requests, for Jesus, that have been brought forth. Lord, we pray for a touch for Brother Donnie as, as he is at home, Lord. You are on that present. Lord, you are there with him. And Lord, you can touch his body, Lord, and lift him up out of that bed. And God, we thank you that he's feeling better and, and getting stronger. So, Lord, we just thank you for that. And Lord, we lift up Sister Patty, Lord, as well, that you would strengthen her. And Lord, we lift up these businesses today that are struggling to find those people that will work and do good work and be proud of, of what they accomplished at their jobs, Lord, that, that you would uh, bring people in and give them a desire to work and make their own living, Jesus. And, Lord, we lift up Sister Martha as she goes to the doctor tomorrow, Lord, or Friday, God, that you would uh, help her foot, Lord, as she gets this cortisone shot. And Lord, Becca, as she goes to the kidney doctor tomorrow, that you would move for her and for Amy, Lord, God, as she goes to the doctor as well tomorrow, that she would, she would find relief. And God, we lift up Sister Donna, Lord, this morning as she fell last night, God, that you would touch her body, God, and strengthen her, Lord, and God, let her heal from that fall and uh, give her strength in her body, Lord. And Lord, we lift up, God, these unspoken requests, Lord. I believe that people have on their mind that you would move and give them favor. Lord, we pray for Ashley and Sister Linda and the boys, God, that they're not here this morning, but Lord, you know the reason. And God, that you would touch them, Lord, if it be a physical element or whatever it may be, Lord, that you would bless and keep your hand upon them. And Lord, we lift up Sister Kanita's family here. Mother, Lord, her aunt, Lord, that's in the nursing home, Lord, that, God, that you would bring comfort and peace to their minds, Lord Jesus, and for her son-in-law and her daughter and her son and daughter-in-law and their babies, Lord Jesus, that you would give them favor, health, and strength, and, Lord, we lift up uh, all these requests, Lord, for our children, Lord, that are in school, God, that you would bless them, Lord, Elijah on the job, and, God, we pray for Sister Laura and the B, God, and Lord, that you would touch them and bless them and bless this service in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Let's remember Brother Michael and his people. Amen. I'm just excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen.
opportunity to give, Lord, for it's through our giving that we praise and worship you also. I pray this morning, Lord, that you would bless those that have to give and those that can't or don't, Lord, you see and understand. We ask you today, Lord Jesus, to bless each and every one that's here, God, Lord, to put forth the effort to come to be in your house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> If you give a time, Lord, we will be there for you. responses. Uh, Brother Jordan, sometimes 150 to, uh, I think this week there was 130 views last time I looked, uh, but it's up to about 150 with some tremendous responses. Uh, and so I, I just, I thank the Lord for that, but I also want to apologize. I understand that uh, last year, my wife for the Trump retreat, she made me a, uh, a sweatshirt that resembled an owl and maybe some took offense to that and uh, I apologize for that. I did not intend for that to happen. I truly did not. Uh, so please forgive me. And I was in prayer this morning and I said, Lord, now if you don't want our trunk treat event to go on, you tell me and I will cancel it. And the, the Lord made me feel good about it, allowed me to feel good about the outreach of it. That's simply all it is. Uh, Brother David is to reach out to this community, this neighborhood, that uh, our intent is not to uh, in any way worship anything that's not like God. Uh, the Lord spoke to me, and if I was to get my prayer journal out, I could read it to you almost verbatim. But the Lord spoke to me this morning and said, you are to be outreach. 
see, we get so crazed up in this outreach events, and we'll have those, don't get me wrong. Uh, but, <clears throat> Brother Stephen, I believe this morning that we ourselves, uh, to be an instrument of God, are to be outreach. Right. You understand that? Stephen, outreach out. I mean, that's, you know, that's what we're supposed to be, Brother Jordan, is uh, living the life of Christ, and in doing so, we... Uh, uh, we are living for outreach. And there goes another school bus. How many of those? That bus came from that. She's prison. There goes another school bus down there. She got back because Baptist van picked up four kids down here. But now there's a school bus. I bet they're picking up eight kids. I told her to lay in front of the van, and so but she wouldn't do it. She just so now, if I'd have told her to go out there and pull them out of the van and bring a fish, she might have done that. Okay? I, I have to work things right. This is because she takes me so little. Hey, come on. You know, you got, you got, <laughs> Some say, uh, I don't know how many of y'all would take off to never mind. <laughs> Let's go on to uh, October 24th, Mr. Marshall. Next weekend, don't forget, uh, how many would be available Thursday evening to meet here at the church about 6 o'clock, go door to door in the neighborhood, and uh, we could bring Silas and Zoe, that would help, and uh, uh, hand out invites to the truck retreat. Would anybody be willing to just raise your hand? One. Two, three, okay, that's three, four. I'll try. Okay, that's four of us. Five. Okay, that's good. That's that's plenty. I just want to go, you know, right here to the uh, area right around the church and hand out the little cards like we did last time about uh, trunk or treat. And that way they know. I know we had to sign that, but I want to make sure. Uh, but next Sunday we'll have one service at 1 p.m. Don't forget, one service, 1 p.m. Uh, then we'll have the trunk retreat from 5 to 7. <clears throat> Don't forget also that we have the bake sale on the 6th of, jo uh, of November, and that's from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. There's still a sign-up sheet in the back, so I'm assuming we have slots, uh, Brother Stephen, for those that want to help uh, sign up today by the end of the service, and then that way we can start coordinating. Uh, but if you have any questions about that, please see Brother Stephen. But we are talking this morning, it will come to pass. And the lesson idea says, I will faithfully wait for God's word to come to pass. Amen. That's exactly what we are doing. Today's focus verses, Brother Stephen, will you read the verses today for us? I'll read the focus verse. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's cross. Amen. You know, this morning, there are people that, that come to the house of God with the expectation of seeing something done. They come, Sister Christie, to learn. Uh, not, that, not, not that I'm any great oracle or teacher or, or, or anything to that effect, but I believe most of the time I learn from you as you ask questions or as you make your statements and comments. That's why I try to encourage that sort of thing. Uh, but we, we should always go to the house of God with the expectation that anything can happen. Sure. Because anything can happen when we go to church. Amen. When you are together in one mind and one accord, or two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. Amen. You, you can't. It's hard to have church when you got just one, but when you got two, and when you got three, even the Lord said that that He would be in the midst. Amen. Because uh, see, it doesn't matter how many are in the church. You look around today; we're missing a few families, but that, that doesn't matter. Nor does it should it discourage us, right? Because at church, anything can happen. Right. God can heal where there's only two or three. Amen. Uh, I remember at Gentryville Church at its lowest point, uh, Sister Yvonne, we would have uh, maybe five or six, and at times we literally had to dismiss service because there wasn't anybody coming. 
Now, in its heyday, Gentryville was full, but as time went on, people care less and less about church, don't they? And so, uh, I would minister sometimes to just my cousin and, and my grandmother on Saturday nights. And that was discouraging, but yet Christ was always in the midst, because we're two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. Amen. The lesson text today is found out of Luke 2, 21 through 40. The truth about God says God's word always comes true. Brother Stephen, would you read that text for me? says that the Holy Ghost was upon him, but yet the Holy Ghost had not come down for the general population, so to speak. It had only been reserved for certain individuals that were anointed by God through the power of the Holy Ghost, right, to perform a work or to stand upon the promises. Now, uh, he was a just and a devout man. You can say, well, well, I won't go there this morning. The Bible never indicates that he spoke in tongues, but we knew that through the Word of God that he was blessed by the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Think about that for just a moment. There's a woman I follow on, uh, on Facebook. I, I try to listen to her every morning, uh, Wendy Peck, and she's from Wiesbaden, Germany, and it's where she lives. And she gets on there, and she's, she's talking about uh, they're reading the Bible through a year, and she talks about what they're reading for the day. And she's an American, but her husband has a job in Germany, and that's where they live. But she always encourages. You know, she's such an encouraging woman that uh, every morning I turn it on, and she makes me laugh. She makes me think. She does this uh, uh, praise on your porch rise and praise on your porch I love that song. Every time I hear it in the morning, I just laugh, and it makes me feel good. But... I believe she is a devoted woman to God. And, and you know what? She's Baptist. I know she was raised Baptist. But I've seen her and heard her speak in tongues. See, we think that just Pentecost speak in tongues. And they have the Holy Ghost. Amen? This man <laughs> was Pentecost, right? He had a promise from God that he was standing firm on. What promises, Brother uh, Jordan, has God made to us? You say, well, he's not spoken to... The, the whole Bible is full of promises that are yours. That's right. That's you understand that? Every promise in that book is yours. From from healing to uh, uh, relationship restorations to, to everything, it's, it's yours. Just from asking. But the Bible says that we have to ask. Amen? Amen. God has laid out all kinds of promises. All we have to do is ask for them. Amen. Amen. But how often do we pray and ask? I believe the man was just and devout because he prayed. He went every day into the temple to perform his tasks. In a moment, you'll find out that Anna also was a devout woman because she goes every day to the temple and she, she does what is required. What is required of us? Prayer. Seeking the face of God reading our Bibles, having an intimate relationship with God. We get so concerned about our, our partners, our spouses, and uh, uh, finding one maybe, or, 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 or having a good relationship with them. That's great. But if Christ is not the center of every relationship, even your relationships on your job, I'm talking about the relationship you have with your job, if Christ is not the center of that, 
and it's not His will that you're there, you'll be in a mess. Amen. Any comments or Brother Stephen can read on? Please. promise in that book is ours, mm -hmm. but we have to believe in those promises. That's right, right? Man. And you can't, uh, you can't run out and sin like the devil and then say, well, every promise in the book is mine. That's right. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's right. Once the van was purchased, two men wanted to go to church. Scotty was one of them. For 60, 
At 68 years of age, body broke through the doors of the spirit filled church and was flooded with memories of attending a church as a child with his mother. Scotty no longer hid from church. He eagerly waited for Sunday. In 2017, Scotty was fidgety at the end of the service. When the invitation was given, he took off his will. He took off in his wheelchair for the front. A short time later, he looked up at Kendall, smiling, and declared, I got it. I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. In 2018, after careful planning and with the help of six men, Scotty was lowered into, the, into a cattle trough in front of the church and baptized in Jesus' name. The prayers of his mother have come to pass. Almost two years later, on January 11, 2020, at the age of 73, Scotty's spirit of being left behind was eternally quenched when his Savior came to take him home on his final ride home. I'm glad that he gave his heart to the Lord, but why do we wait? Uh, you know, just think of all the work we can do for God when we're young and we're healthy and uh, the, the energy we can put in that relationship. But it, it's sad when people wait, uh, Sister Laura, until they're either on their deathbed or something tragic has happened in the family and then, you know, they start to come back to the Lord, they come to the Lord. It, it's sad, but at least his heart was given to the Lord. Amen. Amen. There is nothing wrong, unfortunately, with it, fortunately and unfortunately, with the deathbed repentance. Amen. Right. Uh, we, I, I do not like to be an advocate for such a thing because you want people to know and have earnest confidence in their salvation. But at the same time, people will sometimes wait till that last moment. I remember uh, Grandma Russell being called to the home of a parishioner and um, she was, <clears throat> the husband had not come to church. He uh, didn't believe in women preachers. And if I remember correctly, he was very unsaved all his life. And um, his wife had asked her to come pray for the husband and she went and uh, he said, no, don't you touch me and didn't want. And as he was, as he was dying, uh, he, he began to scream out because he could feel hell's fire coming up his legs and he just screamed that he was, knew he was going to hell. How horrible would that be? But yet we say, well, we don't know what happens after life. Uh, you know, when life ends, let me tell you something, there's, <laughs> you should be at the deathbed of those that don't know God. It's, it's a horrendous thing to know that somebody has left this life and didn't know God. Amen. But when you when they know Christ, more times than not, if there's not a lot of pain, they pass in such such peace. Because in, there's, there's peace all around. Those that know that they know God and they too have faith in Christ, there's just such peace in knowing that when we leave this life, there's a whole new life to gain. In the lesson commentary, uh, was there a comment anybody had? I don't want to take away. Jesus was brought to the temple. Sister Sister Christy, would you read that this morning? Hey, yes, ma'am. Jesus was carried on his back. Amen. You know, we don't, we don't baptize kids and, and have to follow faith. We, uh, we dedicate them to Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Which is basically what happens here. But we, we, I believe that you dedicate them and then you train them up in a way you have to go. You know, that is a twofold promise. You understand that? You train them up in a way you have them to go. But well, Stephen, we raised our daughters in church. They know they should be in church. They go their own way, though. They know, though, we raise them how they ought to go. Same thing can be said for the sinner that's raising their child in, in, in the presence of, of hell on this earth. The perverseness 
They're raising that child how they think they ought to go. That's right. Amen? So when these parents don't require their kids to go to church, and they don't require them to live right as a youngster, then they're just giving their permission for them to grow up and to be hellions. Amen? Isn't that true? Right. Think about that. Amen. Joseph and Mary brought a sacrifice. Sister Laura, that's a long section. Would you read that for us? Specific instructions for Roman sacrifices. They could still be told what that was to be done after the women had a son. The Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If a woman becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son, she will be ceremonially unclean for seven days just as she is unclean during her menstrual period. On the eighth day, the boy's foreskin must be circumcised. These are the instructions for a woman after birth of a son or a daughter. If a woman cannot afford to bring a lamb, she must bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons. One will be for the burnt offering and the other for the purification offering. The priest will sacrifice to purify her and she will be ceremonially clean. If this son was the firstborn, there were more requirements. The firstborn of every animal belongs to man, including the firstborn male from your herds of cattle and your flocks of sheep and goats. A firstborn donkey may be bought back to the Lord by presenting a lamb or a young goat in its place. But if you do not buy it back, you must raise its neck. However, you must buy back every firstborn son. No one may appear before me without an offering. Redeeming the firstborn son is also, is also referenced in Exodus 13, 15 and Numbers 18, 15. This is not a request or a requirement. God did not allow child sacrifice as others have been religion has required. Instead, he required this child to be redeemed. This was a powerful moment in history. Joseph and Mary went to offer a sacrifice to redeem their firstborn son, who was the Messiah. When they stood before the priest, they followed the law and redeemed their son. They redeemed the very one who had redeemed the world. There were, uh, there were sacrifices that had to be made for him. Mm -hmm. there, there was so much requirement to be of the old covenant. Think about that. There are no such requirements in the new covenant. How much less there is required of God under this new covenant with better promises, better gifts. Amen. And think about how little that we give to God. Think about that for a moment. Okay. Because the, the ultimate sacrifice was made. You understand that? Amen was made on Calvary's cross. We know that it redeemed Christ, offering himself. Uh, Brother Jordan gave us uh, uh, the sin offering for There's no We don't have to ever offer turtle doves or lambs or scapegoats. But we, uh, what, what we have is faith now in what he did at the cross covers all our sins. Understand that. And the only thing that we have to do is believe. The Bible says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In other words, they're believing with their heart that that sin offering made at the cross was enough for eternity. Sure. For every sin to be washed away. Now, uh, here's the thing. When, when, we, when we sin and we come short of the glory of God, does that mean that we are in a backslidden state? No. No. I don't, I don't believe but once saved, always saved. But let me say that backsliding is a decision that you make. Amen? Right. You, you make a, a cognitive decision to not come to church, to, to continue in sin. Amen? Not, uh, I hate to say this, but I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago that sometimes we... Uh, as human beings, we, we find that we have just lied to somebody. Some people lie on purpose. It's just easier to tell a lie for some than it is to tell the truth for some reason. Amen? But there are those that will, will unknowingly lie or they will even knowingly lie. How do you feel today? How many of us have ever lied about that question? Yep. How many have ever said, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, we, oh, I feel fine. But in all actuality, every one of us have a problem, right? I mean, I, you know, Brother Stephen just told us he's diabetic. Thank you for telling us that. But 
But how Brother Stephen did that? Oh, I'm fine. Amen. He doesn't go into the detail, but how many of us really are fine? You know, think about it. But does that mean that when we just lie, that we have backslidden? No, no. We're, we're covered by the grace of God. You've got to understand the grace of God. But to backslide is a cognitive decision that you've made to go back on Christ. That's why I have a problem with the once saved, always saved. Because shall I continue in sin that grace may abound, God forbid. We don't, we don't come to the altar, repent, and come to the cross and say, Lord, thank you for that, and then get up and think that we are saved, and then continue in the way we always did. That's not salvation. It's not the way it works. That grace doesn't cover you because you're doing what the flesh wants, not what God wants. Understand that's the difference. Amen. Any comments on anything? You know, you were talking about something inside the Not that I'm trying to bring it to the Stephen, go out there and get the goat out the back of your van, and bring it in. Imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God that that he did come back. Look at the sacrifice, and you're right. What you say? Look how much little that we did to him. So to speak. And we complain about this. We, we, Sister Christie, we complain about things that we we do for God and. I'm afraid that our giving, not just of our money, even though that is that is so crucial, you can't afford to not pay your tithes. But uh, we we complain about getting up and going to church, getting ready, and you know Sunday. Well, we've even made Wednesday night easier for you. But uh, you know we we still complain, don't we? But in the world, seems to be that way. Yes. And when the world sees Yeah, amen. It's a good point. some that do it with sincerity, right? There are. I believe that. I believe that in the 80s when Jimmy Swagger did those those large campaigns uh, at the convention centers and whatever, I believe there's people that got filled with the Holy Ghost. I believe there's people that got saved. But I also believe that some just came down because they were 
everybody else to take that too late, you know. because I, I want to counsel more who have addictions and problems and um, you know the fact of the matter is folks you boil down addiction and every one of us have addiction to something I mean I've got to be drugged and alcohol no no you need to get one of these one of these monitors on your phone that tells you how many hours a week you're on the phone and you'll see addiction you ought to get uh, uh, see how many hours a week we watch television and tell me you're not addicted to television. I'm talking about things that we, we do and things that we um, we do over and over and over because it appeals to the flesh, right? One thing I'm learning about uh, addiction is is that it can really interrupt your life. There are There are certain addictions that we deem as worse than others, right? Uh, it, you know, it starts off with a drink of alcohol, uh, and then it goes to, well, after work, I'm so stressed out, I just, I need this. When you need it, it's an addiction. You understand that? Uh, people who smoke, I, I'm not running anybody down, but don't think that, because I, I have my own problem. But, uh, People who smoke helps me calm down. I need it. Huh. I was reading part of the book that talks about, uh, I'm not going to bring it up, but another addiction that starts off with just glimpsing at certain materials. And then it goes from just glimpsing to becoming a separation in a marriage, bringing separation because the, the looking and the uh, glimpsing becomes a need and then when the need isn't sufficient or isn't satisfied by uh, what's going on between the man and the woman yep. it begins to go even to another stage called child pornography that's how it happens you understand that I'm not advocating I'm telling you the truth when your need for things of this world become more important than your need for Christ, you're addicted Amen. to the world. That's right. Amen. And, and we all are. I mean, there are things that we know we need to cut out, right? We need to cut out uh, our want for more dogs. Oh. <laughs> Sister Alvin, out the trees, like, oh. <laughs> that one. Brother I'm Speed. Say what, though? Oh, <laughs> more blood for more donuts or half a cake. <laughs> You're the one who said to have a cake. I don't have a cake. More books. More books. to that is called self-centeredness. It all boils down to uh, when I'm extrovert, I just don't feel like going door to door. I'm talking about myself, right? Because what was the key word there? I. Think about it. Yeah. It all boils down to I don't want to say a four-letter word lazy, because I don't think that many of us here today are lazy. I don't. I think that we proved that on work day, at least most some of us did. But we, uh, whatever. But, you know, when it came to work day, I mean, we were hustling, we were cleaning, we were doing, you know, and, and you saw where people are not lazy. I don't think anybody could look at Brother Dave and say he's a lazy man. Amen. 
you, but here's the thing. Uh, and I don't know why we're, we're losing time and we're on a rabbit trail here. But Brother David works with his hands every day. He's outside in the in the ditches and in the mud and in the dirt, and he's working manual labor. And he's not a bit lazy. I, on the other hand, sat behind a desk eight to twelve hours a day, and I don't work with my hands. I work with my head. But I guarantee you, I'm not lazy. Right. See, laziness is is not the same. Well, it, it, it is, but it isn't. I'm talking more about self-centered. Mm -hmm. Sister Chris, you got something going on. <laughs> I mean, do you disagree? <laughs> I don't feel like putting out. That's my thing. That's, That's my <laughs> what? Well, I don't want to see it. Another counseling said <laughs> I've never counseled these questions. Oh, it, it, it is. It is unfortunate. Uh, oh, well. Let's go on. I'm going to take that dip deeper. God's word always comes true. Amen. We seek to be led by the Spirit, the question arises, how do I know if God is speaking to me? Mm -hmm. It may take time, it may take time to get familiar with God's voice in the different ways He speaks to us. In this process of being Spirit-led, we must remember that God will not lead us in a direction that is contrary to Scripture. He will never, I've told you time and time again, the Lord will speak and that second voice is always Satan. Right. Trying to tell you That's not right. to Amen. Amen. Yeah. It is. Amen. It is. Yes. <laughs> Go pray for Brother George. Yes. Well, you're going to look stupid. You look at that. Yep. First voice was God. The devil would never tell you go pray for Brother George. Yep. Ever. Don't listen to the voice that is contrary to something good that God wants you to do. Amen. The uh, Simeon has told was told he should not see death until he saw the Messiah. Notice that it's at reading that same scriptures, and he was a righteous and devout man. He was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come. The Holy Spirit was upon him, and the day that day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present baby Jesus to the Lord, as the law required. Simeon was there because <laughs> he was faithful. When we're faithful to the work of God, we'll see his promises come to pass Amen. in our lives. Sure. But when we don't want to be faithful to God, coming to the house of God, I mean, that's, I mean, bluntly what he was told to do was every day you go to the temple. Amen. Huh? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're lucky that I guess that day Simeon didn't bump his little toe on the bed. Amen. <laughs> hey let's turn it over to the last little bit because I want to talk about Anna for a few minutes. Sister, uh, Laura there, Anna faithfully served God and waited for his promise to come to pass. Would you read that section for us? Anna was also a great example of someone who was blessed because she faithfully served God. Luke 2, 36 through 38 states, Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Emil from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but she stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. Anna had committed herself to the work of God. Women could not be priests, but widows could commit themselves to prayer and fasting in the temple. However, Scripture states that Anna was prophetess. Anna was living the life of faith and service she was called to, and God blessed her by allowing her to see the Messiah and his promise being fulfilled to her people. He also blessed her by allowing to be a voice and share the good news of the Messiah's arrival 
with others who had been faithfully awaiting this promise. In a society where women often have very little voice, God gave Anna the privilege of announcing the fulfillment of a promise for which so many had been faithfully looking. Anna was a prophetess. Mm-hmm. Think about that. In the Old Testament, she was used by God. She was also expecting something great. How old was she? She had been, um, she lived as a widow to the age of 84. She'd only been married seven years, right? I think that's what it said, was it seven? And her husband died. Only seven years. She lived as a widow till the age of 84. Think about that. Didn't need a spouse because she had Christ. That's beautiful. Not that there would have been anything wrong with her remarrying. That wasn't it. She decided to turn her life over to Christ. Yeah. Amen. I was listening today on the way here. We all know the, uh, the story of Ananias and Sapphira. And uh, many have argued that that particular text speaks of socialism. Uh, because they they sold their possessions and uh, they were distributed to the needy. I can think about it for just a moment. Even though the scripture very plainly speaks against socialism, that sort of thing, and even most commentators believe the reason they were selling or some had sold all their possessions and gave to the church was because they believed Christ was coming back and they, they weren't going to need certain possessions. Less is more. Man. But uh, you, you know, we can take certain texts in the Bible and Voice we can mess them up. Voice them. Yeah. It really can. This woman decided that she was going to give her life to prayer and supplication, fasting to God. And that isn't a requirement, though, for everyone else. It was what she decided to do. There is absolutely nothing wrong. Imagine the honor that she received from the Lord because she gave 70 some odd years to the Lord. Amen. There is nothing wrong with not being married and giving everything to God. Think about the honor. Well, but you don't see the fruits of what I do in this life. No, no, no. It isn't about that. It's about what you're going to receive in heaven. The greater reward. Amen. It's, we, we look at these, uh, I've said this so many times, the Bible promises us 70 years-ish. And, and think about that for a moment. That is just not even a blip on the radar of the eternity in heaven. Is it better to live our 70 years in happiness here and doing what we want and living what we think is a fulfilling life for 70 years? Or is it better to just give it all to God and live eternity mm-hmm. in satisfaction? Amen. Think about it. And you're much happier with yourself. You're still not. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. I think about uh, when when they put our name on the tombstone and they chisel in that date that we died. A hundred years, if God would tarry, nobody's even going to know who you were. That's right. After our generation uh, passes, I'm sorry, but none of the Alpies will know who Elmer Alpy was. Uh, think about that. Sister, Be- uh, Sister, Al- Sister Laura, would you read section B for us? I would faithfully wait for God's word to come to pass. Just like Anna, each of us can faithfully wait for God's word to come to pass. Anna chose to follow God's plan and faithfully respond to his call. We can do the same. We can refuse to allow the pain, loss, and disappointment of the life and distance from God. We can ground ourselves in God's word, listen to his voice, and be led by his spirit. Drawing closer to God will increase our faith and create an intimacy that will call us to wait on Him. Faithfully waiting on God will not be a chore. It will be born out of a relationship of trust and a place of peace, knowing that one that the one we will love 
will do what he has promised. Amen. If you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh unto you. There's a promise of God. We got to do our part. Amen. We have to do our part. Brother Stephen, would you tell the classes we're done? I want us to pray this morning. Let's pray for those that aren't here. I don't, I don't understand why some aren't, but uh, we leave that in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Let it not discourage us in well doing. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Praying, seeking, fasting. Lord, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to be here. Lord, for it is an opportunity, God, that none of us should pass up to be in the house of God. I pray for those, Lord, that are sick today. God, we see Sister Donna who's in pain and fell last night. We ask you to touch our sister, Lord, to relieve her pain. Lord, we pray for Sister Amy who's been in the hospital this week. God, we lift her up and gone. Lord, we pray for them. We pray for Brother House and Sister Susie. Lord, we, we miss them today. We lift them up. God, I ask you this morning, God, to bless this church. Lord, please bless this church. Help us, God, to reach out. Help us to seek and to save those that are lost. Help us to do our part to set ourselves out of the way, knowing that uh, our work for you is what will carry us through these dark times. And, Lord, that it's our work that we do for you that will carry over into the next life, that the things of this world will not matter in heaven. But, Lord, it's the work that we do for you that will be carried over. God, we praise you for the opportunity and the time in your house. Lord, and we pray, God, for tonight's service as Brother Bays brings the word tonight that you would anoint and bless our brother and bless the service tonight too. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God is so good. So, so good. More than this world could be. He's so good to me. Zoe, are you going to play for us today? She wants to play a song on the piano. Silas, you sit down. Silas? What's that? Sissy's playing, not Silas. She can play a song that she's practiced, and I think we should encourage her. Amen. Is it on? Is it on?
we will uh, have service tonight at uh, 6 o'clock. Don't forget. Don't forget to next Sunday, one service. Yep. One o'clock. One service. One o'clock. <laughs> Thursday night, 6 o'clock. Those that can go door to door with us. Amen. Outreach, outreach. And then, of course, we'll have 5 to 7 p.m. next Sunday evening, the Trump Retreat. Amen. And tonight, Brother Bays will be preaching for us. So come. Amen. Expecting a good time in the Lord. He's doing great on that base. Yes, I mean, back to listen to last week. He was good. Would you stand with us, please, this morning? Go out and enjoy this beautiful day. It's starting to get fall now, finally. Amen. So enjoy that for the week that we have before it starts snowing. Is that the truth? 100 degrees. Last week, it'll be fall this week. It's snowing. Sometimes I think it's cold. It looks better and better. This is it. We've got about 100 acres in this city. How many of you would move there with us? Got a box truck. Put y'all back up. I don't know where we're going. I got people all here back there. All expense paid trip. I mean, come on. And the box truck. Well, give me a book to read because everybody's got to send me my books. <laughs> Think about that. I just got to take a few quarters of the box. Oh, yeah, Lord, Jesus, we thank you for that blessing. We thank you for the state we're in, Lord. Thank you that we are here blessed in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.